Let us take an example of the difference between a type A evaluation and a type B e evaluation. And let's take as our example something that I think most people have experienced. Let's say that we're on a typical highway where the speed limit is 110 kilometers per hour. And we want to say, what's the variation of speed that we see amongst the cars? And we want to express that as a standard deviation. And so what would be a type A approach and what would be a type B approach to uh, solving that, that problem? Uh, that, that's our example for, for type A and type B. So a type A evaluation would take the form of, well, first getting some kind of measurement instrument. So maybe we get a, a radar gun or we can have, um, you have to, to measure up a, a distance and use a stopwatch. Or we can use a number of other ways of, of measuring the speed of the cars as they go by. Then we might decide, well, what do we want this to apply for? And so we might be there at different times of day. We may look at different weather conditions. And we may look at different locations. So we may easily spend a, a week in the ditch. to get our measurement data, to get a representative sample of the speed amongst cars and different times of day and different weather conditions and on different highways. And once we have that, we might be able to take our, our measured data and we might be able to you know, put it in a histogram like, like so. And then we might be able to, to calculate and we can come up with sort of a, a distribution and then we get a standard deviation. Out of that data. And, and you see, what we're looking for is not the average speed of the cars, which would which would, I guess, be somewhere around here. What we're interested in is the spread of the speed of the cars, and we want to express that as a standard deviation. But, but that is fundamentally how we go about doing a type A evaluation, is that we have some way of measuring. We look at what is the, the conditions we want to cover. <clears throat> um, for a normal measurement, it might be different operators and different times and different shifts and what have you. And then we have to spend some time making the actual measurement. So, so that is the fundamental outline of a type A way of, of doing this. Now, a type B way of accomplishing this is that we would say, uh, if you recall that a type B evaluation involves defining some variation limits and then looking for a, a distribution between those limits. And, and so the first step is to come up with, with variation limits. And sort of the way that I would think of it would be to say, well, there are some people who drive really, really, really fast, but, but they're kind of outside our distribution. So if we say, yeah, we disregard the, the Ferraris and the Porsches and what we might see out there and say, well, 
apart from them, then what what is the what is the 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 fastest that people go and and oh I don't, I don't know I let's just for the sake of argument say that maybe the fastest are going let's say somewhere around 130 kilometers per per hour and then we say well at at, at the other end there there are there are some that are going very slow there there are some that are scared to be on the highway in the first place and then if we say well let's disregard them and, and say well sort of the typical people we might see on the highway what is the slowest that they go and and i don't know just for the the sake of argument let's say that the slowest go oh somewhere around 90 kilometers per hour So now we, we've, we've come up with a set of variation limits. And, and, and yeah, you might decide on other values, but I, I'm pretty sure, I've, as I said, I, I've, moved, I've traveled with this show quite a bit. And, and, and the, the answers I get when I ask the audience are somewhere around this. I mean, it might be 90 or 100 on the low end, and it might be 120, 130, 140 on the high end, but it's somewhere in this range. Then the next question is, well, what do we think that the, the, the distribution is? Do we think that there are as many going 90 kilometers an hour as there are going 91, as there are going 92, as there are going 93, etc., etc.? So we have a rectangular distribution between those two limits? Probably not. Um, usually what, what, what people end up agreeing on is that it, it probably looks something like this, where we have something that kind of looks like a normal distribution, but it's sort of skewed towards the high end. And I think that that's a, a reasonable um, distribution to assume. And, and so we, we say, in this case, we would get obviously an, an, an average here, but, but as we talked about in the type A, it's not really the average we're interested in, it's, it's the standard deviation. And, and trust me on this one, if we remove, remove the skew from the, the distribution, then it changes the mean value, but it doesn't change the standard deviation. So, so if we say, well, in, if instead we model it as a symmetrical distribution like so, then the standard deviation doesn't change, although the, the, the mean value does. And if we say, well, we disregarded some people out here on the high end, and we disregarded some people out here on the low end, and, well, I didn't hit it that they are exactly the same, but, but if we say that in here we have about 95, let's see, about 95% of the population is in there. And if that is a normal distribution, then 95% of the population is equivalent to about plus minus two standard deviations. So all in all, the, the whole range from here to here is equivalent to four standard deviations. So we have four standard deviations. Is equal to 130 minus 90 kilometers per hour. And so we have four standard deviations. We also call that sometimes sigma is equal to 130 minus 90 is 40 kilometers per hour. And so in the end, our standard deviation is 10 kilometers per hour. So this would be a type B way of estimating the standard deviation of the speeds we see amongst cars on, on, the, on the highway. And of course, a, a question then becomes, well, if we did go out and, and, and do the measurements out on the highway, how, how different would our result be? And, 
And I would suggest that it wouldn't be all that different. Well, maybe it would be 12, maybe it would be 8, but, but it probably wouldn't be 5 and it probably wouldn't be 20. So, so just based on our knowledge, our experience from, from having driven out on, on the highways, we, we can come up with an estimate that I think we would feel pretty good about. And, and the reason we can do that is that um, we have that experience. Um, if I were to ask my mother, who doesn't have a driver's license or never driven a car, to come up with some numbers, then all bets would be off because she doesn't have that that um, that experience. But once we have some information, like some experience to work from, we can make some fairly accurate estimates this way, and we are not spending a lot of time doing it. Now, when this took maybe 10 minutes compared to if we were doing the actual study where we would have to get some equipment to make it happen, and we would probably spend at least a week making practical measurements. So you see, here, as in many cases, the type B estimate is, is really quite a bit simpler and more straightforward to do. And in many cases, it's at least as accurate as, as the result we would get out of a type, B, type A evaluation. So this is the fundamental difference between the two types of evaluation.